uh, I want to welcome our special guest. This is a friend of Mrs. Becker's. This is Mrs. Uh, Galasso. She is a uh, associate <coughs> professor at Kinesis College and has tons of great information to share with us. So if you don't mind joining me to give her a nice little welcome. And I'm um, just going to to see. All right, thanks everybody. So yeah, I'm currently an associate professor of digital media arts specializing in game design at Canisius University, um, but I also taught at Villa Maria College, which is right up uh, the 33 expressway there um, for 12 years in their BFA in animation program. Um, so as I'm talking, feel free to just raise your hand, ask a question. Um, if you're anything like me, if you wait till the end, you'll forget what your question was. Um, but I'll also give you my email at the end. So if you think of something, again, I do this too, or oh, I wish I had asked her this, you are welcome to email me, ask me anything about animation, game design, software, really um, anything related to that, I'm happy to answer that, okay? So a little bit about me. Um, so I am an animator, I am an artist, um, I like to travel, I like to hike and, and do adventures and, and meet new animators. This is Nick Park here. I was so excited to meet him a few years ago in Burbank, California. Um, does anyone know Wallace and Gromit? Or Coraline, Chicken Run? So he was one of the animators on that. He's super famous if you're in the animation world. Um, I also, uh, I made a film a couple years ago, an animated film, so I had the um, opportunity to go around and premiere it with my husband and then uh, my, my daughters. And last December, so not this December, but the December before, I got invited to Daegu, South Korea, where I got to go and speak about my film. That was pretty wild. So any presentation after that is really not at all scary. Um, you're flying around the world. Um, but anyway, um, so about me, because I think this is so important, right? I remember being in high school and I loved art, right? And um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And so I decided to go to Buff State actually for fine art and specializing. Well, I didn't choose right away. You kind of just started out as fine art. And I thought, I'm pretty good, right? I got voted most artistic in my senior class. And then I got to my drawing one class at Buff State and looked around and everyone except the one pre-med student who mistakenly took this class um, was all <laughs> voted the most artistic in their classes too. So you kind of realize like there's different levels, right? Like. I'm the best in my senior class, but then it's, but wait, I've, I've done a lot. I'm, I think I'm pretty good, but there's so much more to learn, right? I can get so much better than I am now. So um, as I went through my curriculum there, I dialed it in and realized I wanted to specialize in painting. So I graduated with a BFA in painting and a minor in art history. So that history is a big part of it too. Learning what has everybody else already done, right? Because always in, as an artist, we think, I have such an original idea. No one's ever thought of this before. And then you take a few history classes and you realize, mm -hmm. oh wait, it has been done <laughs> a lot of times before. So I have a BFA in painting, minor in art history, and then I graduated. And then I thought, now what am I gonna do? I really don't know what to do with this degree. I love painting, but how am I actually gonna pay the rent, right? And so I took a year off and I worked at a company in Buffalo called Great Arrow Graphics. They're still there now. And I literally started out, my full-time job was putting stickers on the backs of boxes, right? It was start from the bottom and work your way up. And um, from there, I learned how to put the, the cards in boxes and seal them, right? And then how do I cut them down? And then it turned into, well, how do I burn silk screens and actually print and mix paints? And then I had the opportunity to start designing cards. So anyone at the company could design. Um, and what really frustrated me though was I would be in the paint room hand mixing paints, right, to make these cards. It, it would take me days just to do tests of my cards. And then one of the graphic designers that knew Photoshop and Illustrator said, hey, do you want me to like, you know, scan your design into the computer and then we can just test colors in Photoshop, like literally with a slider instead of you sitting with cans of paint. So what took me days, weeks to figure out and test out, it took minutes in the computer. And so that for me was one of the big things that pushed me to go on to grad school. So that's when I went on and I got a Master of Fine Arts in Computer Animation from RIT. Um, and thankfully at the time I had no idea what I was getting myself into because um, my BFA was very low tech. It was me, it was paints, it was a palette knife, right? Um, this computer um, animation program was 
all computer. Um, I literally didn't even know how to turn a computer on when I got there, or I didn't know, like, is this the monitor? Is this computer? What do I do with this CD-ROM thing? Like, <laughs> I was completely out of my element, um, but I worked really hard. It was a three-year grad program. It was really intensive. Um, but while I was there, again, it was like, let me just absorb everything I can absorb, right? Um, and my artistic skills were really, if you have artistic skill, it can really carry you through um, into so many different fields. Um, and so I did my first internship in New York City at a studio called Curious Pictures. Um, that's, they're no longer here, but they worked with like MTV and HBO Family and a bunch of other um, companies. And then my second internship was with Fisher Price out in East Aurora, New York. So I don't know if you're aware, but that's the headquarters of Fisher Price. Um, and during my internship, they said, um, if you can prove to us that we need you, we could turn this into a full-time job, um, which was no pressure whatsoever. Right? Um, but I proved to them how much money they could save by doing animations of their new toys um, instead of having to make real models. Right? We had this robot at the time called Casey the Kinderbot. I don't know if you remember them, maybe from when you were a kid. Um, but they said it's going to take us six months and $40,000 to build a working prototype with our engineers. Can you make an animation in a week? <laughs> they said, we want to move the launch date up a year. And as a new intern, I said, sure. Um, and then <laughs> I worked with the VP of design. It was really nuts. We got it done in a week. Um, they were able to bring this animation, this highly realistic animation, to Toy Fair in New York City and then sell the product to like Walmart, Toys R Us at the time, um, and all these other toy, um, pe you know, people that would sell toys. Um, so they saw the, the exciting sort of uses of animation, right? So there's a lot of commercial uses. Um, and then there's artistic uses, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but so I went from Fisher Price and then I started my own company. Um, I left after about six and a half years. I needed a different schedule. I, was, I had a growing family. Um, and so I started August Productions. So if you ever want to check out my work, and I'll talk a little bit about it, it's augustproductions.com. Um, I left, started my own business. Um, I did that for a couple years, and I grew my client base to uh, other companies. So Mattel, Hasbro, Spin Master Toys, Play Monster. So, um, and it got to the point, uh, and I still do freelance, where as an artist, I don't know about you, but if you want to get into art, I know in my high school yearbook, I said like, you know, when they say, what do you want to be doing in 10 years? I said, doing something I really enjoy that's creative and getting paid for it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's what I'm doing. So I actually get in my freelance work to um, work with some of my best friends that I've met over the years in the industry on projects. Um, some of them are in Providence, Rhode Island. Some of them are in Wisconsin. Some of them are in LA. And we, um, they'll just send me a project and say, hey, I've got this project, and I'll say, when is it due? Where's the script? Uh, send it to me, and I'll let you know if I can do it. And then if I say yes, we do it, and then they just say, send us the bill. Um, it's really, they're like, just make it look really good. Here's what we need. And then they just pay me whatever I think it costs for me to make it. Um, so it's a really exciting to position to be in. In the meantime, with all my freelance, though, I did start teaching. So I actually designed and wrote the program at Villa Maria taught there for 12 years and then I did something I always tell my students to do which is you know are you growing let's reassess I've been here for 12 years let me try something different so um, I applied for a position um, right in the middle of the shutdown of COVID which is a great time to switch jobs um, so I applied and got the position I started during the shutdown of fall 2020 it was pretty wild um, and I've been there ever since so I've been learning a lot about game design and game engines and game production um, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but, oh, what do I love about animation? I think I kind of already covered that, which is I get to utilize my fine art skills in a way that's digital, right? But it's also, the reason I got into it in the first place was I thought, I love painting, I love drawing. What if I could make my paintings and drawings move, right? So that to me was one of the most compelling things about animation. Um, so just if you don't know much about animation, right, there's different forms. There's two-dimensional or 2D animation where you're, you're drawing the images either on paper or digitally on a tablet. Has anyone ever worked on a digital tablet before? Okay, right? So the tablet, I've actually got mine here, is uh, this is one of the best tools that you can have. If you get into any sort of graphic design or animation or art, um, this thing 
is priceless. So, um, and they last forever. Um, I've had, I had my first one for like 15 years. I finally got a new one. Um, but to be able to draw into the computer, I always tell students, imagine drawing with a rock, right? How precise are you, right? Now switch that rock out for a pen. And that's really the difference between trying to draw with the mouse and drawing with a, a digital pen, okay? Then we've got 3D animation, right? A lot of you have probably played 3D games. Um, you've probably seen 3D films from you know, studios like DreamWorks, Pixar, Disney. So it's just another form of animation where you're working in three dimensions, okay? Um, then there's stop motion, right? So if you've ever seen claymation, it's usually the thing people think of first, right? What's stop motion? And it's you, whereas 2D and 3D animation is in the computer and you're digitally making that happen. With stop motion, it's a whole different sort of experience because you have got a camera, right? Or, um, and it could be a still camera and you're taking still images of an object. You're moving it a little bit, taking another picture, moving it a little bit, taking another picture. And then you're playing it in a timeline, like a movie, to make it give the illusion of movement, right? Because all animation is just individual still frames run together, okay? Um, all right, so I did make a short film. I just wanted to talk a little bit about like how, how did I take those artistic skills, right? I was that kid that when I was, I don't even know how little I was, but as soon as I could pick up a crayon, I was always drawing. Does anyone draw all the time, wherever they go, right? Keep doing that, right? Um, the more you draw, the better you'll get. Um, Don Hahn, he's the producer of like The Lion King and The Little Mermaid. He said, we all have 10,000 bad drawings in us, so why don't you get started, right? If you're wondering, like, how did that person get so good? They just kept doing it until their work wasn't terrible, right? There's no secret to it, okay? Um, but I did get to go to um, South Korea. This was actually some of the slides from that presentation. So it was called Creating a Short Independent Animated Film in the Midst of a Pandemic and Job Transition. So I somehow got a film done during that time. But I had this, I got this letter saying, you've got this grant to make this film. And we'd like to see it by May 31st. So um, if you'll talk about it in writing, does anyone do a lot of writing and a creative writing? We talk about this thing called the inciting incident in writing. And it's that thing that like really pushes you out of your comfort zone. So um, that's really, this letter pushed me to make this film. And so um, I had to, in Photoshop, I made a bunch of brushes. Uh, or here we go. I'll oh, just skip that one because we've only got so much time. But um, these are some of my projects. Maybe I'll come back to these. But I used a little bit of my 3D modeling skills. I had to model a needle in Maya. Has anyone ever heard of Maya? Autodesk Maya? Okay. Some of you. What about Blender? A lot more people usually Blender, right? Because that's the free one, right? As a student, though, you can download Maya for free if you have an EDU email address. Um, so I had 3D reference in my software, and then I actually animated it in 3D, and then I could bring it into Photoshop, right? I'm kind of blazing through these, but I'll leave this PowerPoint if I can with someone, and they can look at it later. Um, but I, I made custom brushes in Photoshop, um, brought my 3D reference in, drew over it with my digital tablet. I also incorporated video reference, okay? I just took video on my iPhone. Right, iPhones, if you have any sort of, actually digital phone that's a smartphone at this point, their cameras are powerful enough that you can take video that's high, high resolution enough to use in a film. So I took the video, I then started to paint over the video. This was like layer one of maybe 20, right? So it's a very labor intensive project so, um, or process. So for every second that's going by, if you've never animated, if you just say one 1,000, that's one second of animation, right? But that's at least minimum 24 images for every second that's going by. So if you have to paint 24 images for that one second. Um, and then I went over this maybe a dozen times um, and then added characters over it. Um, another way I used to kind of speed things up was photo reference, right? This was, I had my, one of my daughters take a picture of me looking out the window right? And that became a shot in my film, right? And it's okay to use reference, okay? So I used the photograph for the layout, and then um, I digitally painted this sort of snow scene in the yard, frame by frame, um, and then I added, you know, particle digital snow over that, right? There's that compositing, too, and then um, I made my own snowflakes for the scene, 
Um, what else? I'm kind of blazing through the film part. Maybe I'll come back to this later. I just wanted to talk a little bit about sound. So I was able to record. Um, do you guys have any sort of sound studio or sound equipment here or music equipment? Anything like that? Right, so when you're making a film, um, one of my old professors said 50% um, of your film is audio, right? So you're having to think about um, drawing, painting, sculpture, but also um, the recording aspect of it. So this was just actually one of my daughters several years ago. We went to um, GCR downtown, which is a studio you can rent out. Anybody can rent it out for the hour and have a really fantastic technician recording for you. So if you want to record things. The yeah. The downtown library also has a professional recording studio that you can um, Oh, wow. They have the equipment, the yeah. soundproofing. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, you just kind of use what you have available um, and you can do some really amazing things. I even had my brother um, be one of the voices in my film. He's an air traffic controller. Um, and I thought, oh, he's the perfect voice for I need a newscaster, right? And my brother growing up always wanted to be a weatherman. So I had him be like a news weatherman voice in my film, which was really fun. Um, enlist, enlist your friends, enlist the people you know. So. Mrs. Claus in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is someone that I know and has taught for me before. And so I said, hey, Gail, do you want to be a couple of the voices in my film? So um, the, just think about connections, right? The, the, the students, I always say to my college students, like, look at the folks sitting next to you. Because in 10 years, one of you will be at, like, Blizzard. One of you will be at Pixar. One of you will be at Disney. And I'm not even exaggerating, because when I look at my classmates from RIT, those are all the places they are right now, and it's pretty incredible. Um, well, let's get, oh, and then even you know things you don't think about. So if you're going to enter a film into a film festival, you have to then translate that film and give it subtitles. So again, look to your connections, right? So I looked to my friend Rodrigo, who's from Colombia. He was nice enough to translate my entire film into Spanish, so I could add Spanish subtitles and enter Spanish film festivals. Um, let me just kind of go on here because I think this is probably the most relevant to you folks, right? Like what can I work, be working on now if I want to apply for a game design or animation program? Art, right? And try to look at every project you work on as a potential portfolio piece. Okay, every single one. Like I know sometimes there's a project you're not excited about, but really think hard about how can I make this exciting for me? How can I make it relevant? Let me talk to the teacher and see if they're okay with me maybe doing something a little bit different than um, what the assignment lists, right? Bring a sketchbook wherever you go. Wherever you go, be sketching, drawing, on the weekends, on break. Um, I always tell people to um, study you, you study animals, study people, right? Um, and then with animals specifically, 10 minutes, perfect. So I always say study um, active animals, right? Because they'll force you to draw more quickly in a gesture-y kind of style. And then study those like lazy dog type animals that will just lay there for an hour and you can really hone in on and study what they're doing. Um, writing, you have to be able to write to be in this industry. It's so important, even if it's just as simple as crafting an effective email, but also writing scripts, right? Stuff like that, if you want to get into that part of it. Math, physics, and anatomy, everyone's like, no, not math. It's basic math, right? You're thinking about stuff like, I have two seconds to get my character to jump from here, here from there. My project is 24 frames per second. That means I have 48 frames to work with. So you're kind of doing this math all the time and thinking about physics and how things move. Um, Attention to detail is incredibly important, okay? The patience to fix something over and over and over again, I know it can be exasperating, but that is super important too. Um, the ability to take constructive criticism and not pay, take it personally, right? I probably did it myself as a student. This teacher hates me, they're making me do this again. No, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with making your work better, okay? Um, an artistic eye. I have a lot of students, they, they can't draw at all. They can hardly draw a smiley face, but they have an artistic eye, so they're able to get into things like visual effects. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll save this for later. I want to be able to show the reel at the end. Ability to communicate well in a written and verbal form. Um, 
gosh, what are some industries you can get into? So many feature film, video games, advertising, visualization, product design, even corporate communication, okay? These are actually some places where my students are interning right now um, and have interned in the last several years locally. So there are places you can work locally. It's a little more competitive, but it is possible, okay? These are some possible jobs you can do in the industry. And only a few of them say animation and games, right? There's a lot of jobs you can get into. Um, again, I'll leave this PowerPoint. Maybe I'll, just, I'll send it to Bridget, the link, if people want to look at it again. I did want to show some work, because this is the kind of work you could be doing within a couple of years of, of starting a degree in animation or in game design, okay? So this is from a, a character animation class where, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Where, <laughs> it'll go away eventually, okay. Um, this is the kind of work you could be doing in a character animation class. And so character animation could be in feature film, it could be in games. We did specific cycles for games in that class in both two dimensions, right, hand drawn, and three dimensions. Um, 3D graphics, right? Like taking models and, and bringing them to life in 3D software. These are more character animation type projects. This was this student was like a month into using Autodesk Maya and did that. I was I was pretty impressed. Um, again, early on project here in 3D. Let's see if we can blaze ahead a little bit. Oh, this was a fun project because we get into game engines too. So the assignment here was each student had to model, they had to model a low poly object to go in there. This is visual effects, right? Um, this was an idol, different sort of sequences. This is a character design class. So character design is another whole field you can get into. Okay, we start in 2D and then and move into three dimensions with the characters. That earlier character was inspired by Elvis. <laughs> This is a completely different style. So one thing we push the students to do too is to be able to draw in a variety of styles, okay? So you may have in your sketchbook right now one style and like that's your signature style. But if you really want to set your apart, yourself apart, learn how to draw in a variety of styles because when you get hired at a studio, they want to know, can this person, this artist, draw in our style because otherwise, they won't really fit into this particular production, right? Um, so try to draw in a variety of styles. We even do projects where I've had characters design a new character for an existing show or game to see if they can make it match that style, okay? Um, lots of different assignments. We even do prop, prop design, right? So even within character design, there's also environmental design. If you like to draw landscapes, things like that. Um, I guess I could just kind of let this continue to run because I know I want to leave a few more minutes for questions at the end, right? We've got about five minutes. So I'll just kind of let this run. If you have no questions, you can kind of listen and, and watch. But if you do have any questions at all, um, anything at all from anybody. It's early, right? <laughs> what would you say is the most challenging thing for your students? Ooh, focus. Right? And, and it's gotten worse, right, with social media. And every minute, everyone's so used to being so plugged into five things, right? And, and, and humans have always been good at multitasking, but I feel like a lot of our multitasking skills have been kind of sucked into social media. Like you're thinking about your work, but now you're thinking about <laughs> what someone's posting. So try to get better at your focus, right? Take the phone. Turn it off, like, I mean, not even on vibrate because it's going to distract you. Um, and work on building, it's like building a muscle, is building that focus. You'll find, I'm, I'm, I promise you, that if you really work at it within a few years, you'll get to the point where you can sit for, believe it or not, a couple of hours straight. And all of a sudden you look up and, oh my gosh, what time is it, right? So, yeah, turn everything off. Like I'll, I'll tell my students too, I can't even, I can't have music on when I'm working because it just, it slows me down. So that focus um, and then scheduling the time too, right? Budgeting your time. I have gotten to the point where if I have 10 minutes, right? I used to say like, oh, it's not worth it, right? Um, even if I have 10 minutes, I'll use that 10 minutes because 10 minutes times seven is 70 minutes a week. 
even. If, if that's what you have is 10 minutes a day, it really adds up quickly. Um, spend that time. Um, gosh, what else? Um, one of your worst enemies is yourself, right? I've interviewed people that are lead production designers at major studios and they still will talk about how they feel like maybe they're not good enough, right? So you have to kind of like take that voice and just, that voice is not, is not truth, right? Keep working. Don't compare yourself to those around you. Um, and, and just know that the more you sit there and do the thing and draw and paint or sculpt, the better you're going to get, okay? Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Anybody have a question? We just have about like three more minutes. What do you find most rewarding about your work or that your students kind of Report out on. Yeah, well, with my students, what's super exciting to me is, is having them go through seeing their growth and then seeing them out there working, right? Like I, one of my grads from early on in my teaching, um, I kind of like helped him, and it was his work. It, I'm not taking credit for it, but I helped him get his first full-time job at Fisher Price. So he now works there full-time. His wife now works there. And um, I now, it's so wild, I have him teaching as a part-time like adjunct for me at night. So this student that, again, started from the very beginning, um, you know, got the degree, got the job, and now is giving back himself. Um, so that's pretty amazing. And as an artist, for me, um, again, it's so hard to find that time. But if you, if you put the time in to see your work, right? you know whether it's a painting or a drawing and in my case um it's a film right to see my film at a festival and to have other people get it right and get out of it what i meant for them to get out of it i think is the most rewarding right but also what's exciting about art is sometimes you you want to leave it open to interpretation right like well i don't necessarily care if people don't understand what i get as long as they get something out of it but having to, a, a finished work Having it presented and having people appreciate it, I think, is pretty big. Yeah. I think we'll leave it there, guys. We'll wait here for the bell. Um, but if you can join me in just thanking Mrs. Galassi. Thank you. If anybody was too shy to raise your hand, this would be a good time to go up. And we'll make sure that those pieces of information mm -hmm. will, everybody who was on our check in this week, will go ahead and email that out to you. Mm -hmm. So you have a little more time yeah. to Yeah. Digest. <laughs> Yeah, have a great day.